And we're back in the building. This is the recap with the Goodfellas podcast. You know how we do every week. We break it down. We're chopping it up. Just us and the Goodfellas talking about everything that went down during the week. We talk football. We talk coronavirus. We are one week ele- We are less than a week away from the presidential election. So it's about that time. It's prediction time. We're going to uh, give our predict- predictions. Who do we think will be president a week from today? Hopefully, if they actually count these ballots. You know what I'm saying? Hey. We're going to give our predictions. Shout out to everybody tuned in right now. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. However you're watching the podcast, we're I coming soon to like Spotify and Apple Music and all that. We getting there. We getting there. We take it our time, but we're gonna be there, you know what I'm saying? But um, shout out to the round table panel, been holding it down. First of all, shout out to my man Dav Noble, AP presents in the building. What up, what up, what up? What's good, I'm man? For the earlier segments, man. I know, I know them earlier segments was good. Yeah, man. Sean hey, Montana, what's up? What up, what up? Karev Ya, Heritage Hip Hop. Peace and blessings, salute. To re- right. special right. guest Teresa, what's up? Hi, y'all. Peace, peace, peace. And special shout out to Big A. He will be back next week. He had to do some things, you know what I'm saying? So we talk football. We talk coronavirus. It's that time. Within a week, election night will come and gone. Hopefully, we have an idea who the president was going to be. We've had previous shows where we talked about who we think should be president, why we think or don't think. Each candidate, you know, should be chosen. We're not here to talk about necessarily who we want to be president. It's prediction time. Let's pretend like we here, we bet and we put money on it. We're here to give you our predictions for who we think is actually going to win. So with that being said, my man Dav just stepped in the building. It's only right we throw the question his way. Dav Noble, Biden, <laughs> Trump. Less than a week, one of them will be president. If you had to put money on it, who's gonna win? I think I put money on. I put money on Biden to win okay. to cover the spread. How they call it to cover the spread? I don't uh-huh. know, like two points, but I, I put money on Biden to win the popular vote. <laughs> ah, okay, all right, all right. okay. <laughs> but uh, political with that answer. I think I think he will win the popular vote. But I don't know what what other shady trickiness is gonna happen behind the scenes. But I put my money on Biden. I think I think he'll win. Um, I think he I think he's gonna win by a good amount, to be honest. Because I, mm-hmm. I think this the whole coronavirus thing is really is really hurting and yeah. is hurting him. So I think that I think that's that's why I put my money on. I put it on Biden. Okay, advantages that Biden has going for him. You mentioned the coronavirus. Advantages uh, that Biden has going for him as we head into election day would be to you what? Um, I think the coronavirus that's that's like an ever present thing, and it looks like you know it's 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 turning up. That second wave could possibly be hitting, so that's not looking good. Mm-hmm. I think I think just the whole way that he handled the whole virus and when he got when he got it, like I think handling that hurt a lot of his people. I just think he himself, I think his his shtick or his gimmick oh. is kind of has worn thin yeah. on a lot of people. And I think even he is at the point where he's just saying stuff like insulting his base like out in the open. And it's I just don't know. I think people as wary as they are of you know, the Democratic Party and Biden, I think a lot of people are ready to turn the chapter from this, like from this kind of experiment and this craziness, I think mm-hmm. to kind of get back to a little bit more of a of a, a, a median place, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where we can start making sense again because stuff is crazy out here, bro. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy, absolutely. All right, that's what's up. That's a, a breakdown by Dav... Noble AEP presents. We'll get more into that in a minute. Let's um let's throw this question to our resident Republican in the building, Sha Montana. What's going on? Well, first off, I want to clarify: <laughs> I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. Uh-huh. I think uh, to begin with, just to clarify that because it is. Something nah, we play, I'm, we we playing with you. No, I know, but but there mm-hmm. are people that probably think that. 
um, I'm not about Republican or Democrat. I'm about truth. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of times, you know, you speak the truth about a candidate, it'll make people think you're pushing for the other one. You know what I mean? But that's uh -huh. not the case. I don't, I'm with neither. Now, who do I actually think will win? Yeah, if you had to put money on it, you're a gambler, right? Yeah. Okay. If you had to put money on it, who do you think is going to be president? I know, I know this is going to push people towards thinking what you said was ac accurate, but I think Trump... No, no, no. It, it's whatever your answer is. There's no... There's yeah, no whatever you say, bro. Whatever you want. Yeah. I, think, I think that Trump is going to win on the ground that the same reason why he won the last time. The, the mm -hmm. Democratic candidate is just not strong enough. Okay. I, I really don't think... I really think that, that you know, the reason why he was even able to, to be taken serious was because everybody against him wasn't taken serious and the people that take him serious mm -hmm. are gung-ho like like he almost has like a cult following Absolutely. like trump supporters are like a cult man like they they're the type of people that say the earth is flat like <laughs> yeah. they're, they're that like they don't trust any information given like you know like they, they only trust fox news you know they don't trust CNN and all the other ones. Like like they think that all of them are just, just fake right. and Fox is the only real. One. You know what I mean? Like, and, and then you got a lot of a lot of people of color. Like he doesn't have, Biden doesn't have the the luxury that previous Democrats had of so pretty much solidifying the black vote. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And the Latino vote. You know, so I I, I honestly think Trump is going to win. Do you think Trump? Um, will get more, I guess, uh, of uh, the black and Spanish vote than expected. A lot more. Hmm. Interesting answer. All right. Uh, let me throw this question now to Teresa. Yeah. Yo, what do you yeah. think if if you were to put some money on it? And remember, we're not talking who we want to win. We're talking right. who do we yeah. think is going to win. So if you had to put money on it, you know what I'm saying? You got a couple stacks to, you know, throw out there. Well, who do you think is going to win the presidential election less than a week from today? I really think Biden is going to win. I And I am very much willing to be absolutely wrong. But okay. I think he's going to win. And I, I want him to win, but I also <laughs> think that he will. Okay. Uh, for, mo for a few reasons. I think that we... Un First of all, Hillary underestimated like black women, black people voting for her. I think she absolutely underestimated it. She wasn't a strong uh, candidate in terms of appealing to more people, like similar amount of people that Obama like appealed to. Like all she basically said was, "I'm just going to continue doing what Obama was going to do." Like she but didn't I'm really a woman. have, she, yeah, yeah, she didn't really yeah. have any real, a real platform. But you know, a. Uh, politics consumer like myself i feel like a lot of us made the calculation that she was better than trump in terms of like the craziness that we anticipated his, his presidency would be right mm -hmm. and so as being being that kind of a voter i just thought like you know just go with the, the lesser of the two evils i think a lot of people didn't do that right a mm -hmm. lot of and she and rightfully so for whatever their reasons were um but my my thought was you know at least exercise your right to vote because people died to have that fucking vote. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. um, so in that sense, and so I think that more of those people that took a chance on, you know what, fuck the establishment, fuck you know, <laughs> the regular people and just like, you know, throw a wrench in this whole political thing. So everyone thinks like, you know, po politics is bullshit. Everyone lies, which is yeah. true. So everyone was tired of that same old like establishment, yeah. right? So yeah. I think a lot of people that did come out to vote just said, fuck it, let's throw a wrench in that shit, right? Let's see what happens. Why let's not? See what happens. Yeah. I think those people were like, I feel like more more people, a bigger proportion of that group that said, let's see what happens, wants to go back to like, okay, you know what? Like this body is not the right person or the whole right person, but we don't want that. So people that took chance a oh, chance on him, I think will not more people will not. I think some people will still stick to him. Yeah. So given that, that's I think that's more people will come out to vote. And there's more people that's coming out just to say we just fucking hate this guy. Let's get yeah. then uh, like more people stayed home for Hillary because like, we don't care, you know? Yeah. Now they care because right. now we've seen it, it it's one thing 
uh, I think in the, the previous election, a lot of people are like, yeah, she'll probably win, so whatever. Or a lot of people are like, well, let's give him a chance. How bad can he be? Right. So now that we've seen how bad he could be, I think that that will go to, there'll be a certain segment of those voters who might have voted for him who have second thoughts. And there was a lot of things that she didn't do to even try to win votes, you know? She didn't really do a lot of, like, campaigning for... She was terrible, yeah. ...areas that where she needed the vote. Like, Obama, when he was doing his campaign, he went to a lot of cities. Like, I'm sure he went to a whole lot. There were some places that she didn't even bother going. Michigan, Wisconsin. Michigan, like, you can't just think that you're just automatically going to get Obama voters. Like, that's just not how it works. And so she, there was a lot of things she took for granted. I think that she could have done more reaching out. I don't know how much more it would have done, but something better than what happened because she didn't even go to, like, the three states that have never gone Democrat, I mean, Republican went Republican. Like, you didn't do your, right, your job right. Yeah, that she never uh, even visited. Yeah. And also, remember, she, they, technically, she, she got that, she kind of robbed that nomination from Bernie, so a lot of those Bernie people went right. to Trump. Right, yeah. A lot exactly. of them went to Trump. Yes. Or they didn't vote. Exactly, yep. Yeah. Yeah. yep. Yeah. Absolutely, all right. <laughs> This is a game. So you so so Teresa picks Biden, mm -hmm. uh, Karev Ya, Heritage Hip Hop. Who do you think is going to win the presidential election if you had to put money on it? I completely have no idea. I am, I'm just as confused as the the modern person who's paying attention because this was the first election I seen nonsense get played up more than the actual election itself. Yeah. You know, um, no matter who wins, America loses, in my opinion. I, I hate to say it that way. But I, I don't put it past either one of those men to win. Uh, the Republicans are going very hard at male voters because most, excuse me, men of color traditionally have not voted. When you hear people say, I'm not voting, it's mostly men. So that's who they have been planning their campaign towards to make up that shift that does not vote. So if men come out in high droves and vote Republican, Donald Trump can sneak that, that away. Yet, the people who represent Trump, not Trump himself, have been so vile when it comes to society yeah. that they could turn a lot of people off and make them just vote for a Biden just because they can't put up with the foolishness. Yeah. You, have, you have people who with Trump hats are, are going out and smacking women in the face and punching them in the face on camera, choking innocent children out. For a 14-year-old got choked out in Washington. Wow. <laughs> you know, um it's crazy. And then Bro, they the, tried to kidnap the governor of Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah, that was crazy. Wow. Like, oh, Michigan or something. Yeah. The kid that tried to that was riding around. Uh, in a car with like explosives trying to kill by like it's it's yeah. it's crazy it's like I feel like is like I said I'm independent I'm not I'm not a Republican or Democrat and I, I'm not gonna lie like in this election uh, and many elections because I don't just vote for the president obviously because there's local elections that you got to pay attention to I jump I jump party lines a lot like if yeah. I like a Republican candidate I'll you know, vote for Republican and Democrat in the same election, depending on who they are, especially locally. Right. I just, I just feel like there's a level, like the experiment has gotten to the point where you have to see, like you see Trump for who he is. He's not even a Republican really. Like he's yeah. himself, he's his own entity. And I feel like even the, even the Republicans, I feel like, when you hear some of them talk and how they talk about him, and I oh feel like even they realize it's like, okay, we can't even, like this guy can't, not that he can't be controlled, but he doesn't even listen to, to, to anyone. National security, it's like, and that's just dangerous. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. As a, for a worldwide leader. So I think that's going to weigh a lot of people, not necessarily because they believe in the democratic platform, hundred percent. I just think Trump as an individual is such a polarizing person and his base and they become so radicalized and like uh, yeah. Shaz, they're big, so, so cultish that it's like, yeah. you see that and you're like, do you really want this guy to be leading the country for another four years? Like it's, so I think a lot of people are, 
taking that hard look like, do I jump party lines? Not because I want to believe in what this guy said, like, you know, Biden 100 percent. But I, you know, this guy doesn't stand for my Republican values. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? You kind of want him to be uh, forgotten about. <laughs> yeah, let, let me, I, I want to, um, actually, I want to uh, take that topic, that, what you just said and run, but I'm going to get my prediction right now. It's your boy Tommy okay. Guns. Oh. You know what it is. Let me just uh, give some context based on what Dav just said. He said a lot of people uh, are, you know, Republicans or whatever, looking at Trump like, yo, this guy's not even a Republican. He's his own entity. Like, let me let me give you some context. Obviously, you guys know, during the, during the course of this podcast, very anti-Trump. You already know I am. But if you were to ask me what I consider myself, I would say a conservative. I actually voted for George Bush twice. Obama was the first time I voted Democrat. And it got to the point, not, not, not the, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, not that Bush was the greatest candidate, whatever, but it got to the point where in my eyes, the Republican party got so insane with racism, F the environment, big business and big banks over everything. I just could no longer in good conscience, uh, you know, vote Republican. I still can't. You know what I'm saying? So since Obama, I've, you know, my interests have been in a weird way more aligned with the Democratic Party. Do I believe with everything they say? Like, like, you know I mean, like, nah, not of course not. But the op the, the option of not voting Democrat is insanity, if you ask me. Yeah. So let me just lay that groundwork real quick. Who do I think is gonna win the presidential election? I'm I'm almost right there with Karev. It's it's so, it, it's it's a toss up. I'm, if I had to put money on it, I'd go with Biden. And that's, and I'm telling you, that's by the slimmest of margins for a couple of reasons. First of all, like, like I said, it's, um, man, it's crazy. Not that Biden is the best candidate, but I think what Trump had in his favor when he won, when he kind of snuck in the last election, Hillary ran a terrible campaign. Mm -hmm. She didn't campaign where she needed to. She thought she was anointed to be president, not she had to work for it. Work. I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think with Biden, and not that he's the strongest candidate, but he's less polarizing. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's, let's face it, he's an old white dude. And that actually, you know what I'm saying? That actually appeals to a lot of these, like, not everybody in the rural areas or every white dude is for Trump. Now, in the last election, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, let, let's, we are a very sexist society. Let's, let's keep it, let's keep it a hundred. America is very sexist. Mm -hmm. So I think the thought of Hillary, especially Hillary being as unpopular as she was really a lot of, a lot of, a lot of dudes, a lot of men was not feeling her for many reasons. Go well, for it. Well, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. I yeah. think I'm Biden, her though, too. I think Biden has an interesting coalition of just enough uh, rural, rural men, the suburbs, I think he'll carry a good portion of the minority vote. I actually think Trump will pull a little bit more of the minority vote than previous Republican elections, honestly. But I think yeah. he has, and honestly, he is just the alternative to insanity. I think a lot of people who voted for Trump, they're kind of like, well, how, like I said, how bad can it be? It's change. But it's an outsider. Yeah, it's an outsider. outsider you know, and then I think there was a lot of guys who are like, well, I really don't like him. I really don't trust him. But Hopefully it won't be that bad, but it's that bad. You know what I'm saying? So I think a lot of people who voted for Trump and really didn't want to last election, they're not. I think uh, there's actually a lot, you know, similar to uh, how the polls, I don't believe the polls will say it's Biden a landslide. I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of undercover Trump voters who won't talk about it, but will vote for him. Yeah. Yes. But I also think, there's a lot of undercover Biden voters who are not enthusiastic. They're not riding for him because it's not like they're like, yo, Biden, but they're like, honestly, I can't take it anymore. And, you know, they, they want to avoid the craziness of Trump people. Like I said, they're not, but, you know, so on the low, they're going to vote for him. I think he has enough of a coalition of just, like I said, <clears throat> he's got, he's got some, more seniors than I think they want to let on. He's got a it's good amount of the minority vote. You the guys the vote. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people are just tired of living in a reality TV show. And I think more, more importantly, coronavirus. Like, 
the worse it gets every day, the worse it is for Trump. Well, you know the, the overall, like I said, just comparing the messages, the overall like messages of the platform, like, you know, when you listen to them speak, I, you know, you listen to Biden and granted, it's, it's a lot of the same stuff, you know, the yeah. soul of America, you know, we should, you know, America should look, you know, the government should look like the people, you know, the government, like we need to come back yeah. to common sense. And, you know, and I think one big thing I think is going to hurt Trump because they never is that pre-existing health, uh, health pre-existing health conditions. The fact yeah. that they've been trying to get rid of uh, that they are in court, you know, doing all that trying Obamacare. to dismantle, you know, Obamacare and they, they have nothing and they've come up with nothing in like 12 years to replace it. I think a lot of people, especially in a pandemic, yeah, they're not trying to lose their health coverage. I think that's gonna sway a lot of the the seniors to yeah. vote, you know, for Biden, um, because I think there is a real fear that they could lose their health care, like yeah. because it, Trump could very well just say, you know, I want to do this and then try and do it, and now he's got Supreme Courts like that will. You know what I mean? Like, which is the scariest thing to me. Yeah. Like, but yeah, but we'll see. It's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, and then I think that uh, Trump, not, not, let, let's say, not that the Democrats are the, I don't know, like the Democrats can be annoying, yeah. but I think Trump supporters are so, they're so like abrasive to, to the point where they bring like militias to the polling places and, like I feel like they're so like abrasive and just uh, obnoxious with it that it turns like the right. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of people like it's, regular it, people. You can say like this. Everybody, yeah. like I, I'm not gonna call every Trump, every Trump supporter a racist or anything like that because yeah. I know some Trump supporters who are not racist. But I will say that there are a lot of racist people yes. who are campaigning for Trump, and that. And I mean, openly and proudly yeah. and, you know, and we know that he doesn't really condemn them like that. You know, he's had chances and he's frozen and then come back later on yeah. with like, oh, the recorded, oh, this is what you should have said. But to me, like in the moment, if you can't, if you freeze in the moment, that's what your heart really wants to say. So I feel like there is an uncomfortableness just to the election because it's like, yo, what's going to happen? Like, that to me, I'm just wondering, like, are, are you going to have a bunch of militias out here trying to, you know, make sure people aren't voting? Or are you going to have... Because, listen... They're going to try to the vote. That's what I'm concerned about. They're going to yeah, try to There's some crazy people on the... I guess there's some crazy people who, who subscribe to... Like, I'm not a... I'm not an Antifa, like, you know, apologist. Exactly. There's some crazy people who be out there, like, wilding, and I'm like, I don't, you're not, you know, you're not for me, like, that's some yes. other stuff. But, I mean, I'm just, I'm just worried. Like, I'm praying that nothing, nothing crazy happens on, <laughs> on yeah. election day. Like, that's my fear. Like, something, something crazy is going to pop off. <laughs> like, I mean. I think enough not people dirty. are not, tired. Not dirty. Not in New York, but like yeah. Louisiana, like Alabama, like you know what I mean? Iowa, yeah. like Mitch, like something, somebody's gonna be in a truck somewhere doing something crazy, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yo, yo, Teresa, let, let me holler at you real quick. Just you're familiar with the Pennsylvania area. And to me, that's kind of we're in the tri-state area. I feel like the 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 the, the woods kind of start in Pennsylvania. How 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 do you feel? Uh, how is Pennsylvania like? Like, it, it, do you feel like there might be some um, armed militia just popping up at a polling station? Is it crazy like that? Is uh, it? No, I don't huh? think. I don't think so. I, I don't think so at all. I think uh -huh. that it's the the um, ad administrative people, the government, and the, you know, um, attorney general. I think they're like they're they're they have they're. I think they're democratic. Yeah, I think they have a a good handle on it. I don't think it's going to be like that. I think it's going to mm -hmm. be like status quo. The suburbs do like Biden. So those polls are right. Like I live in the suburbs and, and Philadelphia suburb. And um, yeah, there's a lot of Biden signs. I don't hmm. see any. There's only like one <laughs> obnoxious like Trump sign that I see. It was like a huge, like a Asians for Trump. <laughs> I, I remember seeing that sign when I drove, when I drove on my way over there. 
Yeah. I was like, this, Asians can drive. Yeah, this old lady drove by me in a uh, in a uh, like a. Uh, truck, like what was it called? Like the a jeep, the, the jeeps that don't have the doors on them. Yeah. Mm. They was it was all like a all trumped out, Trump mobile yeah. flags, American flags, and they were driving down. I'm like, you know, but listen, there are people with crazy signs. I like I've never been down here. They be having a little parade too, like a little get together down the street. It's like weird. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah. yo, Karev, Karev, uh do you agree with um, the fact that Trump might actually get a larger portion of, uh, I guess, the minority vote than a lot of people think? Do you agree with that? Yes, yes, I do, because we have a lot of sheep in the game who think that if somebody looks like you, then they have to be right. That's why we have a lot of, quote unquote, black celebrities saying they're going to roll with Trump because of money issues. And that's why a lot of people attack Ice Cube and they attack 50 Cent because of how they can sway people with being a representative of a certain people or a certain thought. Mm -hmm. you know, Wayne too. Well, I don't, I don't count him. He's nobody. So no, he, just came out and, he just came out and said he was he was uh, voting for Trump. Yeah, Who? him. Lil Wayne. <laughs> yeah. Um. It, it was said that Big Ja, who does the to the max things on YouTube, says he mm -hmm. is a, is a pro Trump supporter. You yeah, already seen what happened to Steve Harvey and them. So, I mean. I mean, at the end of the day, I think if Trump won the election, I wouldn't be surprised because I've heard people say, look, he's already been in. Let's just ride the wave to see if he can get the job done. I've heard people say that. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, I also, and I also heard people say, this country has gone from number one in the world to like 23rd. Mm -hmm. So when he said to... What turned me off to Trump was during the first election when he said, um, your schools are nothing. You're, yeah. You have no jobs. What, what, do you what, like, what, what, what do you have to lose? Well, we have police brutality on the rise. We have militias. Um, we have militias trying to, uh, trying to kidnap state officials. We have people dying at alarming rate rates, not only due to racism, but due to the pandemics. Mm -hmm. And the number one thing, no, the two things he talked about that everybody seen was full of crap was building a wall and jobs from overseas coming back to this country. So what more do you have to lose? Right. <laughs> Back, yeah. you know. Back. Yo, uh, Sha, I, I mean, Yo. I, I, mean, sure. Yo, I, I want to uh, throw a question your way real quick. Um, we live, many people will say that we kind of live in a, a reality TV uh, centric culture these days. Do you think that there's some people who like Trump because they like the drama and it kind of reminds them of like a reality TV show? Do you think there's a segment of people who ride with him just for the drama and all the craziness? I don't think so. I, I think uh, I borderline think coming out and saying you support Trump is is kind of like a major life alternate because there's so many people around that hate Trump. Mm -hmm. So I think unless, unless you're, you're, you're like in a Republican circle, you coming out and saying you support Trump is like, I don't know, like a lot of people probably won't even, won't, won't look at you the same. You know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. it, it, it's life changing. Like it's people, people that are actually willing to cut you off as a friend yeah. if you support <laughs> Trump or if you even vote for him, even out of like, it, your interests or whatever, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Might have nothing to do with racism, but I've seen people say if you vote for Trump, you're racist. You know what I mean? So I, I think that uh, I think that what it is is that he comes across as a guy who, who he, he kind of talks the poor man's language. He speaks to, you know, he, he speaks to the so-called common man. Mm -hmm. Um. And a lot of people kind of look at him like like he's like the champion against the machine, not realizing he's part of the machine too. You know what I mean? For real. You know, uh, one thing that I did want to want to talk about, mm -hmm. like uh, about you know, generally like like we're we're worried about uh, who's going to be the next president. I think that what what people of color need to start doing, in all honesty, is we need to we need to look at what works for other people. Right, we need to look, look at look at look at Asians, look at 
Look at uh, people of other ethnicities and what they do making money in our neighborhoods, right? They practice group economics. They're mm -hmm. not competing against one another. You know what I'm saying? We need to form coalitions. We need to stop being individuals and start working for the collective and saying, listen, you know, I like, like have a, a spokesperson and say, listen, I speak for 500 black and Latino hair salons over the East coast. You know, you give me the best price for the mm -hmm. materials right? and you know, we'll patronize just you, you know what I'm saying? We need to do business like other people do business. Right. These things work. We, we continue, Black and Latino people, we continue to be the consumers and not the producers. Mm -hmm. And that's the real problem. Because I never, I never, ever, ever see that. I mean, uh, Tommy, you said you've seen it, but that's the first time I ever, ever even heard of an Asian even caring who the hell's president. It, well, it, it, was, it, was a, it was a sign. You know, I don't, I don't you know, but. Wait, what? Like I don't, I, I don't. No, I, never I saw see a, a Asians for Trump sign in a oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Like, like I, I don't, I don't ever see certain ethnic groups care who the hell's president. They just hustle, yeah. they make their money, and whoever's president, they still have the same family-owned business for for hella years. You know what I mean? While we're still every every soul food restaurant I go to, every every hair salon that I see. You know, it's like they change ownership, they change business, they change management. And it's like, we need stability. We need unity is what we really need. If we had unity between like black and brown people, mm -hmm. yo, we could we could be better. Like we could do better than all of these other ethnicities. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because we give them our money. I agree. Right. 100%. 100%. I mean, I, I, I agree with that. I My thing is, I feel like, even in America, in American history, every time that black or brown people have tried to do that, it's been destroyed. Yeah, <laughs> like, Wall Street. You got, well, we had Tulsa, you had Black Wall Street, you got, you know. Philly in the 1980s. Rosewood? Was Rosewood? Rosewood was real, right? Was that real? Was that a fake story? No, that was real. That was real. That was real, yeah. yeah. I mean, you have stories like that, and, and that always leads me to those funny conversations when you have people that's like, you know, that say black, and you know, brown people they make excuses and it's like they're Kushner, Kushner, you you gotta wanna yeah. help yourself. And I look at that and I'm like, it's it's a fact that there's a wage gap between, you know, minorities and, and you know, Caucasian people. There's a fact, it's factual that banks screw over, you know, minorities. It's factual that they don't, you know, give us the best mortgage interest rate. So they don't we don't, you know, a lot of black folks don't have the houses that are passed down and the, you know, the stock, but you got to start somewhere. And yeah. I think what we do here is dope and how like a lot of people, the listeners may not know, but we, you know, we talk about business and stocks and things like that amongst each other. And I think that's where it starts. Like you have to get your group of people who you trust and you come up and then you give that knowledge to it to your kids and then you have them come up i just think part of it is there's there's such an access to information i think no elections change laws but you still need the knowledge to be able to understand what those laws mean and how to take advantage of them because the laws are the same for us as they are for trump it's just people like trump and in this position they just have the resources to get around the laws they know yeah. how to finagle the laws to fit and do the things that they want to do. And going back to what Shaw was saying, I think we, as people in general, need to take advantage, like you said, and reinvest and, you know, find a cause if it's in your community, give back and do things like yeah. that. And, Get that know, hustle that, on. That, yeah, like. Because no, no, no president <clears throat> is ever going to teach you how to hustle like you no. and your peoples teach you how to hustle. Just real quick, we're actually, actually each other better, man. Like people yeah. gotta start treating each other better in general. Like, I mean, listen, I'm staying. I've been in places before where you know I'm a social worker. I've been in places where it, it, it's terrible. Like it's a bad place to be, but it doesn't mean that you gotta treat a person like their situation. Like, and I think a lot of that just being nice and saying what's up to people or just being genuine to people goes a long way in building those relationships to build those 
you know, those kind of connections that Sean's talking about. Yeah, definitely. So shout out to everybody watching right now, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. The results are in. So I guess it's three to two. Biden wins. Man, that sounds close to me. I guess we'll find out later on this week. We got to pay these bills real quick. Yo, real quick, Dav Noble, AEP Presents. Holla at him real quick. Yo, what up? Hit me up. Instagram, Dav, D-A-V underscore AEP. Instagram, holla. Yeah, Heritage Hip Hop, Karev, holla at him. Heritage Hip Hop on all social media. Google me. Yeah. Teresa, we appreciate you being on the call. Be on the lookout for her podcast coming real soon. Real. Yeah. yeah sure. Shot, throw that social uh, media out real quick. Uh, Instagram, G-O-T-H-Y-Q. Uh-huh. And it's your boy, Tommy Guns, Goodfellas TV. You already know. Shout out to my man, Big A. He'll be back next week. We are the Goodfellas, and I guess we'll see what's going to happen next week. But until then, peace. Peace. peace.